Greetings, tubadors. Well, it's been a while since we've done this. It's been so long, in fact, I couldn't find my camera. I had to go dinner around for it. Found it in a box. Now, I've been concentrating on other things over the past month. Um, other projects, links in the description below. But wonderful to be back, if only for a very short time. I hope that you are all staying physically and mentally strong during these continuing times of plague. Anyway, apart from the discovery that I am very much enjoying not having to go to work and amusing myself with the usual mix of amateur radio and violently obscure doom and death metal bands. <laughs> I've been, as is my wont, uh, laughing with incredulous disbelief at fleurfism in its many and various forms, um, often in the vain hope that at least one of the logically challenged proponents of that insanity might come up with something even remotely approaching a cogent argument. And it will be of no surprise to any of you that I have yet to find a single one. However, finding time to engage in these activities has reminded me of the the very narrow range of repetitive responses these flat earth promoters have in their, you know, these their meagre arsenal. And it got me thinking that if these people put half as much energy into studying the truth of a matter as they did trying to avoid it, then there would very likely be considerably less idiocy in the world. Than there is. Um, it really came on to me very recently when I was responding to a comment left on a thread um, of a video that was recently uploaded by Crafty Keeler. If you're not familiar with her channel, go and have a look. Lots of good shit going on over there. Now, many of you will be aware of the YouTuber that I'm going to refer to. They've been around for a while. They keep popping up. It's popped up on my channel several times over the past year or so. Um, they go by the name of Lev Level Earth Observer. So, you know, the clues in the title. You can tell what direction they're coming from. Um, Keela presented a splendid video, um, one of a series that she's presenting from a sociological observation of conspiracy belief, when up pops Level Earth Observer with as you might expect, an entirely predictable comment. Now, Keeler had quite rightly pointed out that, um, point out the nonsense of a, of a belief in a flat earth, and Level Earth Observer had responded with this. How is demonstrable reality a conspiracy? There you go. So it began, as many of these exchanges do, with a presumption that the conclusion of their argument is correct and therefore requires no further exploration. Now, they were asked several times to supply the proof that they claim to have that the Earth is flat. And now, I even made a public offer that if they could supply evidence for a flat Earth that I couldn't debunk, I would give them £10,000. Now, if that wasn't incentive enough, I also said that I would publicly endorse Flat Earth and then I would delete my channel. But in a textbook demonstration of profound fleurfism, there was no way they were going to present any evidence to support their proposal, despite the incentives that were on offer. Now, they continued to claim quite vehemently that they could provide proof for their claims, but refused to do so several times, denying that the burden of proof lies with them, despite the fact that they are standing counter to an accepted and proven norm. And this is this is what got me onto this subject, you see, because there lies the rub. Now, engage with any flat earther, um, usually, for the most part, within, you know, a comment based forum, but occasionally as an arranged debate, and they'll present a number of logical fallacies. Um, with the vast majority of them not even realising that they're doing it. Uh, so, if you're going to enter a battle of wits with those who are gloriously unhindered by common sense, you need to recognise a few of their favourite logical fallacies. Number one, the appeal to authority. 
Now, this is a very popular one amongst those who lack any ability to understand the fundamentals involved in interpreting an observation. Um, they don't possess sufficient cognitive ability to form a logical conclusion based on an observation, so they rely entirely on the standard ignorance of others within the flat earth world to allow themselves to feel like they contribute in. Um, they constantly repeat the same tropes over and over again that were laid out by, you know, those in the upper hierarchy of the flat earth world, um, even though they don't understand the monumental errors behind what they're actually saying. Um, it's, it's a bit like, um, bit like a talking parrot. You know, it forms the words perfectly well, but has absolutely no concept of any actual meaning to those words. Um, here's an example. You can always tell when one of Nathan Oakley's acolytes is in the chat because sooner or later they're likely to use the term angle of attack. Now, Oakley snatched the angle of attack explanation one day out of thin air um, to explain how things seem to disappear with increasing distance. Um, it was applied initially as an excuse as to why ships disappear over the horizon, but it's since been used by him and others to explain sunsets, um, despite it being impossible for the sun to set, um, certainly within whatever fractured nonsense passes for a flat earth model, um, it's a fallacy that, m that most of us will have encountered. Um, often when someone makes a dumb statement and, you know, just to see what other nonsense comes next, you engage with them and ask for some proof. And all they do is link you to whatever mindless video that they just watched on YouTube. Um, another section of the Fleurfer community who are great advocates of the appeal to authority are the Christian literalists. Now, they are the ones who will always use their mythical collection of Bronze Age superstitious fairy tales to justify anything from, um, I don't know, the subjugation of women um, to what they can eat on any given day of the week. And if you engage one of these medieval superstitionists in an attempt to lay some reality on them, um, their one and only port of call is, of course, the Bible. If it's in the Bible, then it has to be true, because in their mind, the Bible is the literal word of God. So, if you ever got into a discussion with one of these sorts, just ask them which daughter they'd like to sell into slavery, because the Bible, and by the same token then, their mythical sky goblin, says that this is entirely justifiable. So, don't forget, if it's in the Bible, it must be okay with Jesus. Number two, the misuse of principle fallacy. Now, this one doesn't take much explaining, and it's actually a very common device used by flat earthers on a very regular basis, even though, again, it's a solid bet that they wouldn't recognise they were using it, even if they were asked to describe it. The misuse of principle can be either uh, observational or it can be theoretical. But as far as flat earth is concerned, it's almost exclusively derived from observation and has an heuristic foundation. Now, to put that plainly, an heuristic argument is any approach to seeking a conclusion which employs a practical method that is not guaranteed to be rational, but which will be sufficient for reaching an immediate short-term goal. Um, for example, your flat earther wants to prove that the earth is flat. So they stand on a beach and they look out to sea and they are unable to discern any curvature at the horizon. Now, they will intentionally ignore all other parameters that could be included since they are unable to disprove the flat earth when extra variables are introduced um, and more likely are simply unaware of the other factors existence and they probably wouldn't understand them anyway, even if they did. Now, they can then claim to have made a practical observation in which no curvature was observed, so they can then confidently conclude to their own satisfaction that no such curvature exists. Number three, the slothful induction fallacy. Now, this is sometimes referred to as an appeal to coincidence. Um, slothful induction is applied where Induction towards a conclusion through reasonably applied logic is denied its legitimate conclusion through the dismissal of relevant variables or absolutes. 
So let's break that down. Inductive reasoning is um, it's a logical process whereby some of the premises contributing to an argument can be regarded as supplying some evidence towards a probable conclusion. Now, slothful induction is a useful tool for the flat earther because it allows them to admit the inconvenient truths which will disprove the argument and ultimately allow them to present the conclusion that they were looking for in the first place. Um, circular reasoning, begging the question, that sort of thing. Um, it's often used in uh, a broader context as well, um, of wider denial. Um, one of our favourites, Mr Anthony Riley, now he's the guy who thinks that buying a lab coat from Amazon automatically increases his legitimacy in sort of matters scientific. Now he gave us a beautiful example of slothful inductance whilst attempting to disprove the existence of gravity in his relative densities experiment. Um, his premise was that gravity does not exist and that all matter is dynamically acted upon by the relative density of the medium in which it exists. Now, he demonstrated this by placing eggs in the bottom of a water-filled beaker. Then, by adding salt, he caused the eggs to rise. Now, it's, it's a brilliant experiment for teaching primary school children the principles of relative density, but achieves nothing to disprove the existence of gravity. However, for Mr. Riley, being able to dismiss the other variables allowed him to present proof of his own reasoning. And that is pretty much what many of them do. Um, his ap application of slothful inductance fallacy allowed him then to present that experiment while reinterpreting the result to corroborate his hypothesis, essentially, uh, which steered towards the assumed conclusion rather than a logically deduced one. Um, for instance, he completely disregarded the fact that the known force of gravity is a principle absolute within the equation that allows us to calculate the dynamics of an object within a medium of differing density. <sighs> They're never going to get it, these people. They never will. And even if they did, they would ignore it because they do like to beg the question. Flat Earthers never allow facts to get in the way. Anyway, I think that will do for today. I didn't want to go on for too long. Um, and it is getting very, very late here. And as you might, you might pick up, I'm not brilliant in the chess department today. Mm. Fortunately, no persistent dry cough and no temperature. Nah. I think I may have had it a while back. Not sure. We don't know. Let's hope we dodge that bullet. Anyway, there are a great many of these fallacious arguments that the Flat Earther has at their disposal, and if I try to address all of them in one go, then we really would be here for hours. So, in the next video, we will address a few more of the various fallacies that Flat Earthers use to spread their mythical shit on the walls of reality. So, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. If you are subscribed, I already love you. If you're not subscribed, please do consider giving that little subscribe button a tickle, click the notification bell, and YouTube will send you a lovely email on my behalf the next time I upload a video. So, until next time, please stay well, stay in, wash your hands. If you're outside of Wales, please don't come to Wales. Lots of people have been coming over the border into Wales thinking that everything is open for mountain walks and beach trips and the rest of it. It's not. It's all shut. Stay home. Wash your hands. When this lot's over, we'll have a big party. Anyway, be nice to each other. I will catch you all soon. Until next time, au revoir.